Mark, we haven't seen you do a lot of racing since you retired from full-time driving. What is it about this program that made you go, yep, this is a bit of me? Well, yeah, look, you're right. I, I haven't driven very much at all. It's mostly from time constraints rather than not wanting to go and have a drive. In fact, I haven't driven anything on a racetrack for you know, probably three years or a bit more. Um, and when Russell Ingle first spoke to me about it, I mean, who would have thought? Ingle and I being together, it's extraordinary. But Tony Longhurst and Russell have been conspiring on this plan for a while. Uh, Tony's got a long history with BMW and obviously a long history with Castrol as the major sponsor. Uh, they pretty much said, look, we're going to go and do it. And Tony said one day, do you reckon you could get Mark to come and join? And um, Russell spoke to me in the Fox studio at Eastern Creek at City Motorsport Park. And I said, oh, yeah, maybe. Anyway, and the more I thought about it, the more I liked the idea. And I said to them that I wasn't going to do it unless I felt comfortable. So I did a day at Phillip Island about three weeks ago and did quite a, a number of laps. Uh, Tony and I drove the car for the first time, air freighted out, the whole thing, you know, beautifully done. And um, I really enjoyed it. It was one of the best days I've had for a long time. Tell us a bit more about driving the car because they're very different than a supercar with all the electronic aids and, and aero and, and all that stuff. Yeah, so a lot to get used to. I mean, it was like being an Xbox game, you know. It was the uh, first time I've ever driven a car with paddle shift, first time with traction control, ABS in serious race land, um, lots of different modes for everything. And, um, you know, it's a complex high-tech car, but it does achieve its speed massively differently to what I'm used to. So big tyres, big brakes, less weight, lots of aero, more like a sports car from, from my early days driving you know Nissan sports cars overseas so um, I was blown away I mean corners that are hard work in a V8 supercar are easy so the hay shed that we've battled to get through flat our whole lives you drive around there like it's not a corner in fact you drive around there so easily that you pull the car right back over the right hand side and attack Lukey Heights in a totally different line different format so it's a it's a much different beast this race is going to be very competitive. There's factory drivers coming out from Europe. There's supercar stars, you know, Jamie, Wing Cup, Craig Lowndes. There's really nowhere to hide with the BOP. Do you think you'll be competitive against those sort of bikes? Well, I'd like to think so. I mean, you know, we've, we've done the odd lap of Bathurst, so Bathurst is not an issue. It's us being comfortable in the car. Um, and that's the piece of the puzzle that we've got to make sure we've done enough miles and we're, we're totally au fait with the car by the time we get there. I mean, it, clearly it's going to be a lot different across the top of the hill and in places where we've struggled for grip, you know, the chase where, you you know, in yesteryear you battled to get through there flat, this thing will drive around there like it's not even a corner. You could be able to drive there, around there one-handed. So um, it's about maximising the potential of the car, but also staying out of trouble. I mean, 12 hours, you think about how you win a race like that, you actually just got to keep all four corners in it and make sure you don't get caught up in all the, in all the, uh, all the drama through the course of the day. Are you purely treating this as a one-off or could we see you dabble in a bit of GT stuff um, throughout next year and beyond? Probably I'm, I'm treating it as a one-off at the moment, but again, it's about how much I enjoy it. I'm, you know, I've organised my trainer that I've always used, so we're, we're back into it again. Um, as I said, I'm going to be in the car as much as I possibly can. I, I don't want to do it and not go and do a good, solid job. I know that I'm not going to blow the young German superstar away, but... I know that if I go and do a really good solid job, you know, we're a chance to finish on the podium. And obviously the headline of all this is that you're teaming up with Russell and there's a lot of jocular banter that's been going on for a long time. Are you actually looking forward to seeing how he works at really close quarters? Because obviously you're taking this very seriously. Yeah, look, I'm, you know, take all the banter away and the fun and the stuff um, of Russell and I joining up. We've been massive rivals for a long, long time and there's always been a healthier respect for how Russell drives. And I am really interested. Um, Tony and I have driven together. We know how we operate. Um, and I like that rapport because we've always got on really well. And when you've won Bathurst together, there's a, you know, there's a camaraderie that comes from that. So I'm looking forward to, to racing and doing some stuff with Russell because it'll be even straight away. I mean, he was supposed to drive the car yesterday. We're doing seat positions and we're looking at all the attention to detail. We're both very competitive guys and again, I don't want to do it, and I'm sure he doesn't, if we don't go and do a good job. Russell, you're a pretty good salesman, and you've managed to bring Mark Scaife out of retirement. Tell us how you did it. <laughs> yeah, I feel like a used car salesman at the moment, I can tell you. Anyone that could sell the dream to Mark Scaife, I reckon that's a pretty good deal. But, uh, yeah, look, when, I, when Tony approached me, um, I was actually rebuilding a boat at his Boatworks Marina on the Gold Coast about going in the 12-hour. 
I thought it was a great idea because it had been on my bucket list. He said he was going to do it properly. He started conversations with BMW and and uh, want a factory support and do it all right. And with his links in previous years with BMW, I thought, well, it was a great opportunity. And then he spoke to me about oh, who we're going to get as a third driver. And he, he, he mentioned Mark. And seriously, I just went quiet for a little while. And I said, look, I'll ask him, but good luck, you know. And uh, the next meeting, supercar meeting I went to, I mentioned it to Mark uh, as we were up doing our um, usual TV stuff. And he said, yeah. He yeah, actually doesn't sound bad and, I, and could have blown me over with a feather. Like, you know, so we got talking about it for the next few days. He rang Tony and then lo and behold, there it is. So the three of us sort of got together and we're really excited about the opportunity. So, um, yeah, so we just, it was just one of those things, you know, something you never thought would happen. It just clicked and it happened. And here we are today. And of course, driving the same car, there's going to be nowhere to hide. The timesheets will sort of say it all. Is it going to be competitive between, uh, between the drivers? Oh, for sure, but competitive in a sensible manner as well. Um, Tony and, and Mark have already done a, a test day at Phillip Island with the car, ran the car in and went out and had some good runs and had some new tyre running. And, and uh, Tony was quick. Mark's right on the pace. Stephen Richards sent a benchmark time and Mark was pretty well there straight away. So he hasn't, he hasn't lost his ability to drive and uh, he loves the car, you know, because you remember... Mark has driven Formula Holden, so he's driven aero-type cars before in, in, and uh, driven cars uh, over in the UK as well. So, um, you know, single-seater, Formula 3000s. So uh, he, he knows how to drive the things, you know. And, um, you know, I'm going to really enjoy getting behind the wheel of a, what I call a proper race car. You know, it's got aero, it's got downforce. I did a lot of Formula 3 racing, and that's what this thing's like. It's a, it's a big Formula 3 car with the bodywork around it. So it's going to be incredible. Everyone that I've spoken to that have driven a GT car says they are fantastic. So um, I'm really looking forward to the challenge. Now, you, as part of the testing program, you're going to go up to Bathurst in late November and do a couple of days there. How important is that? Because obviously these things will be rocking around there in maybe even sub two minutes. So it's going to be a lot different than the supercar. Oh, of course, yeah. I mean, we'll do two, maybe three days at Phillip Island beforehand. Uh, so we're going to do plenty of mileage with the thing because we think mileage for us is so important. But then to actually drive the car at Bathurst, that's going to be the clincher because we'll get a feel for the car, what it's going to do, the downforce across the top. I mean, the bottom half of the circuit won't be much different to a supercar because all the speeds are relative and the slower corners probably are going to be a, a similar sort of pace. It's when you get to the top of the mountain and there'll be places where you're breaking a supercar you'll be wide open throttle in these things. So it takes a little while to get your head around, and, and I think that's just confidence with the car as well. But Phillip Island's actually a good test track. A lot of people reckon Phillip Island is probably the best place to set up a car uh, and get a feel for a car for Bathurst. High speed, long corners, you know, really getting a feel of the downforce. So we'll, we'll be well prepared. I mean, like I said, anyone that knows Mark Scope and myself knows we won't leave any stone unturned. Like we're very competitive people. I think we've proven that in the past, and very aggressive people as well. And and uh, we'll, we'll we'll make sure we're, we're prepared. I mean, they won't. Like I said, we'll make sure everything is right with the car and ourselves to give us a good shot at this race. Not too more than 12 months ago, you were pretty much a retired racing car driver with your TV commitments. Since then, you've driven factory Fords, Holdens, Nissans, and now BMWs. Is there going to be more racing in the future just, just like this? What's your sort of read on all that? Yeah, well, no one read the fine print. <laughs> you know, I never said I was going to give up racing, just full-time racing. I really enjoy this style of racing. I, I love doing the supercar endurance races because there's no real pressure. The main driver qualifies it and has a lot to do with the setup and that. I just go along, do my stint, do it as good as I can, and and I'm still competitive. I think I proved that over the over the weekend a couple of weeks ago that I'm still competitive and uh, right on the money. I really enjoy it, and, and the 12 hours been on the bucket list. Oh, the stature of the race has just grown unbelievably over the last few years, and I'm just going to really enjoy getting behind the wheel of the car. And, and but this part of my career, it's great because it's just no stress. I can actually just get in, race a car, race some of the best cars on the best tracks, and then go home at night. It's just fantastic. So I'm probably enjoying my racing more than I have in years.